Chapter 201, Whiskey with Wolfberries, Part 3 Finally, it was time for the parents' meeting to be held again. Previously, Daoyuan class announced a four-day break, but no one turned up for classes even after that. This was because the Daoyuan class never mentioned when classes would start again. Even without attending the Daoyuan class, everyone was training at home. On the other hand, Lu Xu would allocate a portion of his time to study since he felt that the knowledge of a sophomore student wasn't enough for this world. Nighttime has fallen and Luo Chang was busier than usual. This commotion was due to the Heavenly Network people since Luo Cheng International School had just been invaded by a metahuman. As of now, they couldn't identify that metahuman's power and couldn't determine his class. But based on their current judgment, that metahuman seemed to have mastered an advanced transformation technique unique to an elemental type. But without witnessing it with their own eyes, Li Yixiao and the rest couldn't confirm the metahuman's real ability. Could it be the shadow element? This element hasn't been encountered so far. But what really puzzled them was that the other party was extremely strong. Being able to jump to such heights was something only a class ED strength type was capable of. Of course, this wasn't an impossible feat everyone knew that a metahuman's physical abilities would level up with training. As such, the Heavenly Network categorized the intruder as the following for the time being, suspected duo identity of practitioner and metahuman. At a higher level of training, the experts within the Heavenly Network would start being envious of colleagues that had awakened. Of course, some felt that effort was much more important than a lucky breakthrough. Li Yixiao was the representation of such people. In more than one instance, he referred to metahumans as clowns. From his point of view, someone who had never been through tough training to acquire their individual powers was the same as being useless. His words weren't without a basis. His power had been cultivated bit by bit and his mastery over his own strength was the result of his own hard work. As for those metahumans who awakened, they had never been through the process of discovering and familiarizing themselves with their own powers which explained why Li Yixiao never thought highly of them. But others were not convinced. Metahumans' powers were ever-changing and what if someone got hold of a power to control time and space? Would Li Yixiao still be so arrogant? There were billions of people in this world with billions of different mindsets. Even within the heavenly network where everyone possessed a similar advanced level of thinking, different opinions about the potentials of training would still arise. This was a normal occurrence. It would be strange if everyone had the same opinion. Lu Xu flashed his student pass to enter the school, recalling how he and Lu Xiaoyu had just broken into the school that morning. And to think that this ordinary-looking security personnel was apt in combat, Lu Xu felt a little admiration for them. If not for practitioners, these people would probably be more successful. As he passed by the classrooms downstairs, he overheard two security guards, was he really laughing? Yeah. His laughter gave me goosebumps and he wasn't even wearing clothes. In fact, Lu Xu received a lot of distress points today and lighting up the sixth star was just a step away. This meeting did not only involve the parents, but the students too. If you wish to quit, then both parents and child would have to sign the agreement followed by sealing of the chakras. If you wish to formally join the Heavenly Network, the enrollment procedures would take place on the same night and so would the awarding of rank. This was considered a special procedure and it was a quick process. Lu Xu understood that this was a special treatment for practitioners and also to prevent practitioners from affecting social stability and prosperity, everything had to be fast. If it was a normal procedure, it would have taken up to a few weeks to process. At this moment, Lu Xu bumped into Shi Fei who asked directly, continue or quit? Continue, Lu Xu answered without hesitation. Shi Fei started laughing, then congratulations to you. If you, Jiang Shui and Chao Qingxi stay, you three would be directly awarded the rank of lieutenant as a reward for your performance inside the remains. Lu Xu was stunned. That's awesome. Doesn't this mean that my pay will be higher than the rest? To be honest, Jiang Shui's performance inside the remains wasn't as impressive as his or Chao Qingxi's, but the catch was his family background. 
Lu Xu didn't find this unfair and was happy to see Jiang Shi rising up the ranks. Wishing the best for his friend, this was a real friendship. On the other hand, some other people were strange. Addressing each other as brothers, but when one was more successful than the other, the other friend would secretly hope for his friend's death. At this moment, Lu Xu signed the agreement and stood at one side to observe the other parents with their children. This Dao Yuan parents meeting had no room for discussion as everyone was only given two options, to stay or to quit. It was extremely strict. It seemed like about a fifth of the students were quitting and their chakras were about to be sealed, never to be used again. Lu Xu wasn't sure about the situation in other classes, but he reckoned that the number of students quitting wouldn't be too few. After all, a common viewpoint on this issue was that in the face of dangers, parents would lean towards a safer option for their children. A fifth wasn't too few or many. Lu Xu stood aside to watch the commotion and it turned out that most of the parents had talked about this Lu Xu student with their children. As a result, their impression of Lu Xu had changed for the worse. Lu Li's father was one of them. After hearing from his son about Lu Xu's disturbance outside the remains, he was fuming mad. In fact, he had spent a fortune on Lu Li's training and just treating his hair loss cost more than 100k which wasn't even effective. Lu Jiangwo was a businessman and had always been in power. As he walked to the podium to sign the papers, he glanced over to Lu Xu, young man, control your teenage energy. Lu Li was still a child and what most normal students would think of for revenge would be a fight, or to gather a gang to beat him up and would never think about murder. But Lu Jiangwo was different. He was from an older generation and the business industry at that point in time was like a battle zone. Lu Xu replied cheekily, Uncle, your son's hairstyle is aging. Do buy him some wolfberries on the way home. At this age, drinking whiskey with wolfberries isn't shameful. From Lu Li's distress, plus 999. From Lu Jiangwo's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu was delighted. The distress points he needed to light up the sixth star was finally here. Chapter 202, Oath, Part 1, If Lu Xu could be intimidated by Lu Jiangwo, would he still be Lu Xu? He understood that Lu Jiangwo's generation of people had been through all kinds of ordeals in order to survive, and it wasn't surprising that they would be rather vicious. But he was still a normal human being. In fact, Lu Jiangwo could hire a hitman to kill him but the problem was, who could Lu Jiangwo hire? Frankly speaking, all class CS were well-known figures in the country. One example would be Zhang Yutong who was placed in charge of the entire Yuzhou's heavenly network management. The local class CS were difficult to hire and experts outside of the heavenly network were hard to find. If a foreign class C was brought here, it would definitely alert the heavenly network. As far as the recent empty Beimang incident was concerned, the entire country was now prohibited to foreigners. Not that they couldn't enter at all, but if they came in and killed a talented student such as Lu Xu, leaving the country would be impossible. At this point in time, besides Nye Ting who was watching over the capital, the rest of the heavenly kings were allocated to the other parts of the country. Even if they managed to escape out of Yuzhou, there would still be a heavenly king to lead the chase. China was too large for anyone to escape. If class CS were impossible to hire, only class DS would be available, but Lu Xu wasn't afraid of anyone below class C. Even if Lu Jiangwo really hired a class C, who could kill Lu Xu under the watch of Li Xianyi? This was no joke. If a normal person could threaten someone who had embarked on the road of training, wouldn't this training be pointless? At this point in time, Shi Fei looked at the students who had stayed, congratulations to all. From now on, we will all be colleagues, so do take care of one another. Immediately after, Shi Fei started hugging each and every one of these Daoyuan students and Lu Xu was the first. Honestly, Lu Xu was rather unused to someone else being so passionate towards him. He suddenly realized that Shi Fei didn't thank everyone, but instead, congratulated everyone who stayed. What would thanking everyone mean? It would be thanking everyone for their support and trust. On the other hand, 
Shi Fei's congratulation represented the pride he took in being part of the Heavenly Network and being enrolled in this organization, was something worth celebrating to him. Lu Xu didn't know what to say and remained silent. Lu Jiangwo signed his name sullenly as Shi Fei smiled, those students and parents who are quitting, do remain in this classroom with me and someone will be here soon to seal your chakras. The rest can proceed to the field downstairs. Those students quitting, you will be regaining your peaceful life, but I don't see it as a good thing. I feel that people should work hard to prove themselves in their life. Lu Xu was surprised, what is the gathering for? Does Li Ixiao have something to say again? But for some reason, after hearing Shi Fei's words, Lu Xu felt calm and was able to think clearly. When he was downstairs, he saw that Jiang Shuyi was already on the field. His parents didn't attend to sign the papers, and he was enrolled just like that. It's not surprising since he was from such an established background. Lu Xu greeted Jiang Shuyi cheerfully, you're really special. What are we gathered here for? Jiang Shuyi waved at the sight of Lu Xu and waited for him to walk closer, it's for the oath. Oath? Lu Xu was stunned. He had forgotten about such a procedure. It seemed like be it joining a sect, or enlisting into an organization, or even embarking on certain jobs, there would always be an oath. But he didn't feel the need for an oath, it's more like a tradition? Everyone would say things that even they themselves did not believe in. Lu Xu suddenly realized a trace of solemn and seriousness in Jiang Shui's expression and was a little curious, is this oath that important? The parents were all brought to the side of the field. They could only observe the oath ceremony from outside while there was a little excitement brewing among the students. Like everyone else, their priority used to be studying and waiting for the college entrance examination before deciding their own future. Whether or not the future they wanted would come true, everything would still be peaceful and dull. But at this moment, their identities were completed change and they had become soldiers. No, more accurately, they were about to become officers. Needless to say, this change was significant enough to have an impact on their mindset. As of today, their lives would be completely torn apart from the past and would no longer be the same as those ordinary students. At this moment, Li Yixiao suddenly walked up the flag-raising stage and looked down at the chaotic Daoyuan students. He said calmly, gather according to your classes. Li Yixiao was also holding a national flag and Lu Xu suddenly felt that Li Yixiao was finally serious for once. Normally, this guy was unreliable, but once he was silent and serious, he gave off an indescribable sense of power. This feeling was like, something that Li Yixiao was serious about must be major and to be taken seriously. It felt like a mysterious strength flowing through Li Yixiao's blood. After the students had been lined up properly, Li Yixiao walked to the side of the flagpole and a little clumsily, he tied the national flag to the rope. It seemed that it was Li Yixiao's first time doing such a thing and just tying the rope took him five minutes. After the rope was tied, Li Yixiao personally raised the flag up. A gust of wind blew over and the red flag was instantly lifted up. The commotion between the students suddenly died down. Li Yixiao spoke calmly, welcome to the heavenly network. From today onwards, speaking halfway, Li Yixiao paused. He then calmly pulled out a piece of crumpled paper from his pocket which incited laughter from the students. Lu Xu looked at the piece of crumpled paper in Li Yixiao's hand and imagined that he must have taken it out many times to memorize the script. But in the end, he still couldn't memorize it. Li Ixiao continued, from today onwards, everyone will bid farewell to the peaceful life you once had and the pledge to shed blood for the nation will no longer be empty words. Li Ixiao sounded serious and dignified as the students gradually quietened down as if someone had pressed the mute button, for the whole field. Everything came to a still. Chapter 203, Officially Joining the Heavenly Network, Part 2, Li Ixiao continued, This world had never experienced peace. The magical era has brought about big changes, changes which you or I could not avoid. Since the establishment of the Heavenly Network a year and a half ago, 32 practitioners have already been sacrificed. The oldest was just 34 while the youngest, 18. 
Perhaps you might be the next one to be sacrificed tomorrow, or perhaps even myself. The path of training has never been smooth sailing. This path is filled with malice, blood, death, and swords. But in our lives, even if our teammates are sacrificed, we'll have to step on their corpses to continue the fight. Raise your right hand and repeat after me, Li Xiao already had his hand raised, his hand balled up into a fist. The previously unreliable principle in the student's eyes has never been so reliable, it was as if he turned into a different person overnight. His calm words described a life the direct opposite of calm but everyone listened to it and accepted it. All the students down below also quietened down and raised their right fists. I pledge that as part of the heavenly network, I will not fear death or difficulties. From this day, I will defend my country with my life. I will defend my country from dawn till dusk, I will defend the civilians. I will learn military tact, politics, and science diligently. I will train tirelessly and protect my equipment. I will uphold the secrecy of our military and stand by our traditions. I will be courageous and fight against chaos. To fight courageously and not fear death. To protect society and our home country. To protect the peace and prosperity of the citizens and under no circumstances will I betray my homeland. From this day on, I dedicate the life I love to my home country. I will never stop defending my country. I will stand firm and abide by those aforementioned words for life. The voices of Daoyuan students and Li Yixiao echoed around Luocheng International School. The atmosphere was energetic. They were no longer students, but warriors who were on the path to battle. The voices of more than a thousand people were powerful and majestic. Those students waiting in the classrooms to be sealed could not help but go to the corridor and gazed silently at everyone on the field. Some of them started regretting, thinking if their choice was wrong. Perhaps they shouldn't judge this decision as wrong or right, but this decision should be made in reference to the heart. How could a teenager's energy, passion, and vigor be extinguished at such a young age? In the future, they will be at the back like a bunch of cowards watching others fight for them as they carried on with life, marriage, careers, and start their own families in peace. But when they realize that they could have been one of them battling, will they be able to get over their own conscience? They had no answer. Lu Xu scanned his surroundings. Everyone was agitated and passionate after reciting this pledge as if they had just been brainwashed. Some people might be afraid of death in the future or just drift along in this life they dedicated to their country, but no one could say that they were insincere at this moment. It wasn't just them reciting the pledge. Lu Xu also saw the class teachers, such as Shi Fei, standing in the corridors watching them and reciting the pledge as well. They must have taken this pledge before. The moment after the pledge, even Lu Xu who once treated the pledge as just a sort of gimmick, was subconsciously silent. Sometimes, no one knew when he would succumb to emotions or some sort of force, to feel strongly for a cause. This wasn't a legitimate pledge and Lu Xu felt that the lines were exaggerated and like a gimmick. But if they were mere words and blatant lies, it would not have attracted so many people to recite with so much pride and in unison. Lu Xu never felt that such a pledge would cause any sort of restriction. After all, things such as pledges, weren't they meant to be broken? They could just say it casually with their mouths, who couldn't pretend to be moved and passionate by clenching their fists and reciting the pledge? But at this instant, Lu Xu was gravely silent. He felt that there was some sort of energy in his heart that was energetic and agitated. It was just like a ball of fire, burning intently and heating up his blood. Lu Xu still felt that he wasn't someone who would sacrifice his life like that. He still looked forward to the day when he is powerful enough to stop depending on the heavenly network and leave the organization, to lead his own peaceful life. But he thought that if he didn't contribute to this organization before leaving or if he didn't become friends with these people and fight, passionately alongside them, there would be some regret in his life in future. At least, he should do some justice for the resources provided to him. Yes, it's to show his gratitude for the resources and not for some stupid ideology. 
but even if he thought this way, Lu Xu was still rather confused as this turn of events was far too different from his original intentions. Li Xiao bellowed, military licenses and other stuff will be distributed to everyone half a month later. You may go home now. And always remember what you guys pledged under the flag tonight. To Lu Xu, he was still more inclined towards working for his freedom, and this freedom didn't mean freedom to do whatever he wanted to, but the sort of freedom which will give him the ability to reject and say no. He really could not tolerate it if he had to stay in the heavenly network for life and listen to the orders of superiors. Lu Xu entered his house without saying a word and went on to participate in the lottery, eat the chi fruit and then suppress his chi while singing little stars. At this moment, only training seemed to be able to calm him down. It was just a pledge, who wouldn't forget a pledge after reciting it? Even if pledges was useful, why were there still so many betrayals? But once the hot-bloodedness from the pledge died down, Lu Xu returned to being his rational self. He felt that being rational was what humans required the most. This was the most important quality to achieve improvement, not by being hot-blooded or impulsive. Looking back at humanity's development, didn't generations of people used rational thinking to look for ways to bring humanity forward? The chi was becoming harder to control and Lu Xu trained hard until 3 a.m. in the morning and he slowly got used to it. It was no longer as hard as it was. He packed up, washed his face and went out for sword training. Li Xiani was sitting by his stone table reading a book as Lu Xu trained with his sword quietly in the garden. He had advanced from learning picks to stabs. Picks had to be intricate and were technical while stabs required speed and precision. Li Xian mentioned that when the eyes, spirit, arms, handle and the tip of the sword are one, the sword in Lu Xu's hand would be unstoppable. Li Xiani was very quiet today and only focused on his math textbook. He had advanced from second year of middle school to the third, and Lu Xu was even more silent as if he had something on his mind. As to what the problem was, only he had the answer. After he was done training, Li Xiani put his book down and asked, have you joined the Heavenly Network? Yeah, what plans do you have? I don't know. Chapter 204, Celebration, Part 3, he went on to sell stinky tofu after his training. During the process of his training, the cheese movement was successfully suppressed by Lu Xu twice. Although Li Xiani didn't show it, he was silently surprised that Lu Xu's control of his qi far surpassed his when he was at his age. Just as Lu Xu brought his crates of stinky tofu over, he saw Uncle Li and a few other people discussing animatedly over something. When Lu Xu came over, they actually acknowledged Lu Xu with great enthusiasm, Little Xu is here. The atmosphere was warmer than usual, as if something good happened to everyone. Lu Xu placed his crate down and replied, Uncle Li, what are you guys so happy about? Could it be that your son is getting married? Pooh, he's still young, Uncle Li chided, Little Shu, you're really a student from Daoyuan class? Back when the two policemen received a notification to look for Lu Shu, Lu Shu had shown his Daoyuan identity card, but they still wanted to verify his identity. Lu Shu was confused. Yeah, we heard the news online. We actually don't surf the web, but our kids told us all this stuff, Uncle Li hesitated before asking, Did you stay, or did you leave? Lu Xu suddenly realized that everything regarding the Heavenly Network was widespread online. The pledge taking by Luo Chang's Daoyuan class was extremely loud last night. The echoes could be heard outside of the school's fences and on the roads and streets. Some cars even stopped and passersby would look toward the school. They started feeling emotional as they heard the pledge as well. Some people even recorded the lines in the pledge and uploaded it online. The noise from the ceremony was indeed too loud and the passersby didn't even have to be near to hear it clearly. It was a powerful pledge delivered by more than a thousand people. This situation wasn't merely limited to Luo Cheng, but Daoyuan classes all over the country were going through the same ceremony. Subsequently, the videos that made it online caused a huge uproar. Some people said that the pledge was but an empty promise and others condemned it. Lu Xu looked through all that before and felt rather flustered. 
He responded calmly to Uncle Lee's question, I chose to stay. Uncle Lee displayed his blooming smile once more. <laughs> Look, I knew little Shu would stay. He went back to his food cart and brought out a small plastic bag for Lu Shu. Uncle doesn't have much money and I still have to pay for my son's university fees. To congratulate your appointment as a military personnel, I bought 10 pairs of socks for you. Hopefully, they're to your liking. Auntie Wang was joyous as well, I bought 10 pairs of insoles. Little Shu, I hope you appreciate them. Old Lu, who sold crepes beside them, showed a face of disgust, you guys have the cheek to give him that stuff? Here, little Shu, I old Lu have a wallet for you. You're going to be a military official, you can't keep your money in your pockets forever, it's really unsightly. In no time, Lu Shu's arms were filled with gifts. As he stared at these gifts, he suddenly raised his head and smiled at everyone, thanks, everyone. I won't stand on ceremonies then. He wasn't too sure why these people, who didn't have the slightest blood relation to him, were so jubilant at his appointment as a member of the Heavenly Network. It even seemed like they wanted to be part of the organization. After selling his tofu, he left his crate at his yard and headed out once more. He went to school and sat on the roof of the block for Daoyuan class. He looked at his schoolmates entering school while having their breakfast in their hands. He also saw them running to the basketball court with a ball during break time, and eventually saw them leaving school in groups when school ended. He looked over from the morning till sunset. No one noticed Lu Xu at the top of the building, neither did anyone know what he was thinking. Lu Xu seemed like he was distant from the rest of the world. He then followed the streetlights and slowly walked back home. He didn't enter his house when he reached his door and instead, he jumped up to the roof and sat there quietly. Lu Xiaoyu heard the movement and came up to Lu Xu's side, Lu Xu, you have something on your mind. Yeah, Lu Xu acknowledged her and looked far ahead and the thousands of lit homes. The incident today had confused him. He knew he was selfish and cared about himself, and all he thought about every day was how to survive by himself, but at that moment, he actually felt a yearning and desire to fight alongside those people if he had to. Lu Xu said calmly, Xiaoyu, do you think we'd have to fight for other people? Yeah, Lu Xiaoyu nodded, if the old man meets any trouble, we should fight for him. If Uncle Li or Auntie Wang is threatened, we should help them fight as well. Lu Xu waved his hand, I wasn't referring to these people. I was referring to, people we don't know, people who we don't even know how they look, or what they're called. They might not know us either, but when someone shouts to protect our home country, we'll have to dash to the front line to fight for them. It feels weird, but don't you already have the answer in your heart? Lu Xiaoyu analyzed calmly. Lu Xu was taken aback, and he smiled at Lu Xiaoyu, Lu Xiaoyu, you're quite the thinker. Of course, Lu Xiaoyu said proudly. Lu Xu lowered his voice, I feel that those people are quite silly, the old man as well. No one knows who you are, but you're volunteering to uphold world peace. So much effort was spent on fighting, but no one actually knows that you're protecting the world, but for some reason, I feel like I should fight alongside them. This is my train of thought, how about we do some things first before escaping? Even if it's... Yeah, even if it's just protecting Uncle Lee and the rest of them. Lu Xiaoyu nodded her head, I'll do whatever you do. But Lu Xu, does that mean you want to be a hero? Lu Xu patted Lu Xiaoyu's head and laughed, are you nuts? We are still so weak, neither of us is a class C so how could we be heroes? <laughs> This world does not need us as heroes. I don't like being a hero either, and I don't think I am qualified to be a hero. We'll just do what we need to do. Then, I'll bring you around the world for a tour. After the tour, we can come back home to watch television and relax, isn't that wonderful? Chapter 205, Holiday, Part 1, In Reality, Hot Topics Would Eventually Die Down more than a month later, the discussion on Daoyuan class had passed and there weren't any more happenings in the lives of Daoyuan students. The normal students would go to school while Daoyuan students continued their training. 
Those with merits were rewarded and they successfully completed the mysterious census chapter and started on the third chapter, the mysterious Tao chapter. On the other hand, those without contributions were stuck at class E. The class D represented by the mysterious Tao chapter was clearly something those still at class E yearned for. They wanted to earn merits but there wasn't much they could do in this peaceful era. Being stuck on this ladder, Training was no longer useful as they could only further stabilize their powers. This led to everyone regaining their normal school life. Attending the Daoyuan class was just a something that they signed up for. As for the content of Daoyuan class, it was a continuation of Buddhist and Daoist teachings. Luo Chang was still the same and in fact, the incident this time was just a little spark to the people's peaceful lives. It's not like there was really a war and the fuss about it would die down eventually. The streets were still bustling with activities and once it was the evening peak hours, the roads would still be filled with traffic jams. The vehicles at the back would honk impatiently, drivers cussing and swearing about the wait. The most flexible vehicle on road would be the motorbikes as those riding motorbikes would drive freely through gaps between the cars. The back door of the west courtyard was adjacent to Kaishian Road and at the intersection of Kaishian Road and Jidong Road, there was a small train ticket outlet. At the ticket outlet, the voice of a teenager could be heard. Miss, student ID is half price, so shouldn't the military officer card have half price too? There's no such thing. No student ID means no half price, the lady at the counter sitting behind a computer sounded very firm. Lu Xu refused to give up, Miss, can you confirm it again? This is obviously a discrimination against military personnel. The lady replied coldly, Are you buying? If not, please move aside as there are people queuing behind you. In fact, the sales lady had become extremely skeptical of the validity of this person's military officer card. Lu Xu looked back and besides the expressionless Lu Xiaoyu, there was no one else at the outlet. He sighed, two tickets to Qingzhou's capital Xijing City, one would be a child ticket. As of now, there wasn't any half price for military personnel buying train tickets, but Lu Xiaoyu satisfied the height requirement of 1.2-1.5M for a child ticket at half price. One student ticket, one child ticket, and both at half price. Lu Xu suddenly felt that he should bring Lu Xiaoyu out more often before her graduation as paying for the full ticket price was so not worth it. Lu Xiaoyu, who was watching Lu Xu waving his officer card, rolled her eyes, you weren't like this before. Didn't you say you were passionate about this? So why are you using such a sacred item to bargain? Lu Xu wasn't pleased, it's two separate things. I said that I'm willing to make a contribution to defending my homeland but I never thought of this as something sacred. Fighting for the country and selfless dedication to the country are two different matters, and I'm the former. At this moment, Lu Xu's body suddenly froze. His originally pale face turned red in an instant. His qi was surging. Eating two qi fruits a day for over ten days, the qi outside his mountain of qi was like a thick heavy cloud. The number of times he had to suppress it a day had increased from 24 to 30 times. And Lu Xu had a stubborn personality. The more it surged, the more Lu Xu wanted to suppress it. Whenever this happened, Lu Xu thought that his qi had not accumulated into raindrops and it was already so difficult. So how did the old man and the rest achieve an ocean-like qi? Could it be that people from the past had a stronger willpower? That didn't make sense. Lu Xu felt that his own willpower was strong too. As of now, the thick qi was causing him trouble every once in a while and Lu Xiaoyu asked expressionlessly, Lu Xu, did you contract polio? After spending two minutes to recover, Lu Xu replied, you won't understand. The lady at the counter was shocked. Watching Lu Xu twisting in pain, she was worried that this scum wanted to play the pity card to ask for money. Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu held onto two red train tickets and left the ticket outlet. This was their first time going on a tour and first time buying train tickets. The tourist season in Qingzhou had arrived as the holidays were starting the next day. The sophomores would start their final year early and they only have less than a month's time of the break. 
As such, Lu Xu wanted to make use of this time to bring Lu Xiaoyu out. Lu Xu looked at the time, we will be taking the train for 22h. All because you wanted to save money by not taking a plane, Lu Xiaoyu said coldly, I've never taken a plane. Lu Xu smiled, you've never taken a green train too, so why not experience this first? We can take a plane next time. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 99. Although they didn't have much savings right now, the recent sales of stinky tofu had been bringing a stable income of $6,000 every month. As such, their savings would slowly pile up. With a stable income, Lu Xu was confident that they could take a plane the next time. Lu Xiaoyu looked at Lu Xu and said in all seriousness, Lu Xu, you're so stingy. What do you know? Good steel should be used as the knife's edge. Lu Xu replied gleefully and wasn't ashamed about his stinginess. I am the knife's edge. Lu Xiaoyu exclaimed seriously. Yeah yeah you are. Lu Xu chided, let's get home and quickly pack our things. And make sure to not forget anything. Since we have already bought the train tickets, we can't refund them now. Let's take the plane the next time. Okay, Lu Xiaoyu replied. At this point in time, Lu Xu was feeling a little sense of accomplishment. After living independently for so long, he had always wanted to bring Lu Xiaoyu out and it finally came true. To Lu Xu, there was nothing better than this. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty and we just put them on the show Try to look to the heaven 